Yes? Are you excited? Look, I'm not trying to get you scared. I'm trying to get you encouraged. Second Chronicles 28, 21 through 24. Yes? Ahaz took away all of the offerings and the tithes from out of the house of God and all of his own treasures out of the house of the king and he gave it okay over there whatever's going on there Shh. okay thank you Thank you. He gave the things of God. He decided to give the things of God over to the enemy, to the things of the world. People that served Satan. And in the time of his distress, he went against God even more. He began to give sacrifices unto demons. Because he said, maybe the demons will help me. Maybe Satan will help me. He began to pray to idols and worship idols because he said, maybe they will help me. But they were the ruin of him. Look. 23, but they were the ruin of him, and they were the ruin of all the people of God that got involved. And Ahaz took all of the things needed in the church, and he broke them all, and he chopped them up in pieces. Everything needed in the church to do church things and he locked the doors of God's church. And he locked the doors of God's church and he built an altar in the world. And he told the people that instead of going into the house of God, they had to go to the altars in the world. Worldly altars like backsliders do today. They worship at the altars of the world. They worship their business. They worship their money. They talk to their dogs. They talk to their cats more than they talk to God. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And this is a sign of the end times. Book of Timothy tells us there will come perilous times. They will become lovers of themselves more than, more than the things of God. But then he had a son. The father decided to go the wrong way. And it was the ruin of him. But he had a son. And his son's name was Hezekiah. Second Chronicles 29, 1 and 2. Hezekiah began to reign when he was 25 years old. He became king after his father died. And he did that which was right in the eyes of God. Look at verse 5 through 11. And Hezekiah said, Hear me, you worshipers of God. Cleanse yourself. Get clean. Cleanse your walk with God. 
cleanse the church. And where his father had closed the church and told the people, you have to worship the world. No more going to church. You worship the world. You worship your job. You worship your money. Like the backsliders today. But Hezekiah said, no. That's what my father did. But not me. But not me. I am going to change. I'm going to change my life regardless of what my parents decided to do. Verse 6. For our fathers trespassed against God. They did evil things. They walked away from God. They backslid away from God. They turned their faces away from church. They turned their backs on God. Also, they closed up the church. They put out the light of God. They quit giving offerings unto God. Most people today give absolutely nothing to God. Nothing. Nothing. Even the Catholics, people that say that they're Catholics. Well, the Catholic Church says you have to give 10%. Ask the priest. But they don't. They don't go to confession. But the Catholic Church says you have to go to confession. You have to go to church. The Catholics have Bibles. You're supposed to read the Catholic Bible. Any priest will tell you this. I used to work with those priests in California. But they don't do it, but they still say that they are Catholics. People claim to be believers today, but they don't do believing things. They break their word. They are untrustable. They lie. They cheat. They've fallen away from God. They couldn't tell you five scriptures in the Bible. You ask them, do you love God? Yes, I love God. Well, then tell me about God. They're embarrassed. They're embarrassed. They're ashamed. Well, then tell me your five favorite scriptures. They can't tell you five scriptures. The most they might be able to say is John 3.16. But they can't usually even quote that. But they can tell you everything on the internet. They can tell you everything from google.god on their computer. They know all the names of all the singers, all the music people. They know all that. They know what's on TV. They know what's on Netflix. But they don't know God. Hosea 4 verse 6 says, My people perish because they have lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Jesus said only the truth can make you free. In order to get free, you have to have the truth. They claim they have the Holy Spirit. But you could not have the Holy Spirit if you're not working for God. If you're not involved with the things of God, how could you have the Holy Spirit? That would be impossible. Because what the Holy Spirit does is he wants to work for God. The Bible says in John 15, if you will not work for God and produce fruit for God, you'll be chopped down and cast in the fire. You have to produce fruit for God. You can't just say, oh, I believe in Jesus. The Bible says demons believe the word of God. They know the word of God and they fear and tremble. In Mark 1, starting in verse 19, the demons said, we know you. Jesus came in church. They said, we know you. Demons know Jesus. We know you, you are the Son of God. Well, didn't they just say John 3, 16? Didn't the demons just say John 3, 16? We believe in Jesus, and we declare you are the Son of God. Do demons have the Holy Spirit? Will demons go to heaven from saying those words? No, they won't. Why? Because their fruits are wrong. 
their fruits. Jesus said, we will know them by the fruits, by the fruits of someone's life, not by what we say out of our mouth, but by the fruits of your life if you really love God. We can look at a marriage and we can see if you love your wife. If I ask you what color are your, are your wife's eyes and you don't know, if I start asking you personal things about your wife and you don't know, well then how could you have, how could you have a real marriage? How could that be love? Obviously, they don't look in their wife's eyes very much, and that must be because they're not home very much. Well, what is your husband like? What's his favorite thing? Well, I don't know. What color are your husband's eyes? Well, uh, you see? That can't be love. If you never come home, if you never come home and ask your wife, so uh, where's your husband? Well, you know, he's... If all you do is carry a photo of your wife and kiss the picture, but you never go home and kiss your wife, that's not a marriage. That's a fantasy. That's a fantasy. If all you have is a plastic Jesus made in Hong Kong with him hanging on the cross, made in China, like all the motorcycle guys and the taxi guys, they, they kiss the plastic Jesus. But when you ask them about their walk with God, they don't have one. He's just a lucky charm. He's no... The plastic Jesus is no different than what the Lumai sell out here. The charms, the bracelets, to keep evil spirits supposedly away. But instead, they bring evil spirits. Because Satan is not stupid. He knows how to distract people. Why are you here? How did you get here? I don't mean church. How did you get here? People of the world will say, well, my mother and my father had sex. And then, boing, out I came. That's wrong. That's wrong. If your mother and father had never had sex, God would have taken your spirit and put it in a woman down the street. He would have put it in another woman down across town. Because all spirits are made by the father of spirits, the father of lights. God made spirits. He made your spirit. Your parents did not make your spirit. The only thing that your parents made was the house. See, your parents are house builders, but God is spirit builders. Your parents built the house, and God sent the renter, which is you. Now, why did God do that? If you're made in heaven, why did God send you here? What would be the point of that? What would be the point of that? Just to find your way back home somehow? That would be ridiculous. That would be pointless. When you come to Jesus, you say, Jesus, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. And later on, Satan says, well, now, hold on, hold on. I didn't mean Lord. I meant Savior. See, because if Jesus is your Lord, that means he's your boss. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I say? See, those are people that have come to believe the lie of Satan that all Jesus is, is your Savior. Well, I just want to go to heaven. Now, if the point, of going, if the point here was just to go to heaven, that would mean 
that the first time that you said John 3, 16, I believe Jesus came in the flesh, he's the Son of God, and I asked him to come in, into my heart, you'd fall over dead. Those would be the last words you ever said, because mission would be accomplished, right? The work would be done, wouldn't it? You accomplished the goal. You got from heaven to here, and now you found your way back. It's over. But you see, when you receive Jesus, you find out it's not over. And that's a surprise for a lot of people. What? There's more? There's more? You're kidding. More? And they don't want to accept that. They don't want to accept that there is still more. They don't want to accept that Jesus is Lord because they worship the gods of the world. And the gods of the world is me, myself, and I. It's all about me. And that's the spirit of Satan, Isaiah 14. Self-worship. Self-worship is satanic worship. The reason why you're still here living and breathing is to serve God. Your whole objective of God sending you, you here was to serve God. I don't mean just become a pastor or some church guy or some kind of guy like me. No. We're all servants of God. The Bible says once you come to Jesus, you're called a servant. Not a believer, you're called a servant. And servants serve. It's required. It's required. You're saved by grace, but you walk in works. Why do you walk in works? Proof of the Holy Spirit. Proof of a changed life. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, those things won't be important to you. You won't feel the importance of that. And that's not going to work. So I want to... I want to show you that there are things that you can do to improve your life. There are things that you can do to increase the anointing on your life, to increase God's favor on your life, to get the blessing on your life, to finally come to the place of having rest and peace while still working. While still working. And if you're wondering, well, how, how can you work and have rest? Well, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. All good gifts come down from the Father of lights. All good gifts come down from the Father of lights. If you want to be blessed, you can only get it through God. Otherwise, you can listen to Satan, and you can work yourself to death, and you can live a life of absolute pressure and stress and anxiety and never come to the place of rest and peace and never been able to shut your mind off through the obsession of being pushed and driven to somehow just keep up. To just keep up. And sooner or later, it's going to break you down. That's the world. That's what the world is, is designed to do. Now, you can have a job in the world as long as you seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God, and then all other things will be added. Jesus said, peace I offer to you but not as the world offers. Because the world has an offering of false peace. Satan is the father of every lie. It never quite works out. And if you have family curses in your life, the Bible says he will visit the sins of the family down the third and fourth generations with curses in the family. And there's plenty of curses in the New Testament. And if you have these curses on your life, you can't get your way out of it by doing something in the world. You can't get your way out. The more, the more you make, the more the enemy just takes. The more you lose. You can't ever quite get ahead because that's how curses work. You never quite have rest. You never quite have peace because that's how curses work. And that's why... There is deliverance in the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
you can be delivered we can break these things we can remove these things and we be we can begin to start to be successful and happy the way that God intended for us to be go back to verse 7 second Chronicles 29 7 my father closed the church he put out the light of God he began to burn incense onto statues and onto idols and God turned away from him look at verse 8 so the wrath the anger of God came upon the people of God and he delivered them to trouble they were shocked God handed them over to attacks and trouble and to hissing what is hissing the serpent the snake Revelations 12 calls Satan the snake the dragon the serpent and because of this our fathers were attacked our sons and our daughters and our wives were attacked by the enemy because of these because of these things look at verse 16 and so he commanded the priests to go into the inner part of the church and to cleanse the church which includes the people which includes all of us to get ourselves clean and to bring out the unclean things and to take it away from the from the things from the things of from the things of God now that's a guy that decided to change his life the thing is we all have to make up our mind Jesus said everyone will bear their own cross it doesn't matter that your father was a pastor or it doesn't matter if your father was a total backsliding murderer it doesn't matter except for the bad things of your father you need to cleanse and get delivered but it doesn't matter other than that to you your life your relationship with God can only be done with you only with you look at verse 31 verse 1 then Hezekiah said we have to remove all the demon things out of our house out of our land get rid of it all so they went in and they started to take away all the things all the things that God hates and God was pleased and Hezekiah got favor and then he had a son now the grandson look at 33 verse 1 Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king but he instead of the good things that his father did started getting back into the demonic things that his grandfather had done and he began to build again the high places and bringing back in the idols that his father had destroyed and he began to build demonic false altars back into the church they began to pollute the church and their walk with God all over again and he began to talk with people fortune tellers with familiar spirits he began to get involved with wizards and witches like Harry Potter and this brought much evil that made God angry and he brought idols into his house they brought idols into the church look at verse 10 and the Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people to stop it and to repent but they would not listen they would not listen and so 
the Lord handed him over to the enemy. And they took him amongst the thorns. The thorns are the curses of Genesis 3, the thorns and thistles, right? And they bound him with fetters and chains, and they carried him off to Babylon. And when he could no longer take it, when he was so attacked and he could no longer take it, he cried out to God and humbled himself. And he began praying again. And he prayed on to God, and God listened to him. Look, no matter how far you go, no matter how far you've gone, you can still repent. You can still repent. Now, Satan's going to tell you you're not forgiven, but God will say, yes, you are, as long as you really repent. It doesn't matter about your history, except you're going to need to get deliverance from the things you went too far. Okay? And that's why the gospel is there. You can get delivered. Your past, sin, removed as far as from the north, the south, the east, the west. That's the scripture. You can be forgiven, but a sinner cannot be forgiven. You cannot be forgiven in the middle of sin. How could you be? You're still doing it. You're still involved. The only thing you can get at that point is to repent long enough to seek deliverance, to get free if there's a demon in your life. You get free from that, but then you still have to walk, you still have to walk it out with God. Casting demons out of your house, out of your business, out of your life is a good thing, but it's not going to keep you free. It's not going to keep your freedom. Only you can keep your freedom. And the way that you keep your freedom is start building a relationship with God. Every person, whether it's the father, the children, or the grandchildren, are all responsible individually for their own walk with God. You can't say, well, I got baptized in the Catholic Church when I was uh, one years old two years old. That's nothing. That does not make you a Catholic. That doesn't make you anything. The Bible says the age of accountability for a boy is 13. That's the bar mitzvah for a girl when she's 12. You have to make up your own decision. And then it doesn't matter just what you say. It matters what you do. These, these, are, these are the things that are going to make a difference Unto you. You have to seek God yourself. You see? The ones that came to the class this morning at 3.30 in the morning, that is every Sunday we have a class at 3.30 in the morning, well, they're getting the favor. They're getting the favor. It's not because you show up at 3.30 in the morning. It's because you're taking the effort above and beyond those who don't and you're seeking God. It's proof you're seeking God with all your heart, with all your mind, see, with all your soul. You're going deeper into the things of God. Then on top of that, we're fasting. Start fasting Friday all the way through the end of Sunday. That's what I do. I'm going to my third day of fasting right now. I feel great. I feel wonderful. I feel excited. I'm not tired from getting up in the middle of the night. If you're tired, get delivered. If you're tired, get, get delivered. Get the anointing on your life. And you're going to get this by truly seeking, seeking the Lord. Luke 41, 42. Luke 4, 41 and 42 says, Jesus would rise up early in the morning to seek the Father. To seek the Father. Well, why would he do that? What would be the purpose of Jesus doing that? I thought he was the anointed Son of God. I mean, if you're the Son of God, why do you have to uh, seek relationship and power with God. Look at Luke 5, 15. Luke 5, 15. 
But so much the more went there the fame of Jesus, and great multitudes came together to hear, and he healed. They were healed by him of their infirmities. And Jesus withdrew himself into the wilderness to pray. Why would Jesus need to pray? Why would Jesus have to get up early in the morning to seek the Father? Jesus said, of myself, I can do nothing. But only through the Father who sent me. Jesus said, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons and heal the sick, then you will know, no doubt, the kingdom of God has come to you. The Spirit of God moving to cast out demons and heal the sick is the kingdom of God come to you. So you see, Jesus had to have the Holy Spirit. A lot of people never thought about that. Jesus had to have the Holy Spirit. It says he was endued with power on high when the Holy Spirit came down on him. When the Holy Spirit came to him, it says it drove him, the Holy Spirit drove him, pushed him, compelled him, out to the desert, alone, to pray and fast. Now, don't just be thinking, oh, that's 40 days, oh, we got to do 40 days. No. There's not a time requirement. But prayer and fasting is a required thing for the anointing. Did you hear what I just said? Say this. Prayer... No, say this. The Word says, prayer and fasting is required to go up higher in the things of God. Yeah, because the Bible does say that. Jesus had to do it. He had to do it. It wasn't, oh, I just like to do it, and wouldn't that be a good idea? He had to do it. We looked at the scripture last week. They brought a guy who was deaf and dumb, suicidal, a boy, and the disciples tried to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus said, bring him here to me. And Jesus cast out the demon. And they said, why couldn't we cast out the demon? They used to be able to. Matthew 10, verse 1 says, I gave them power over all demons, over every sickness, over every disease. I gave them power. What's that? That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. And they went out and they did that. But then... They started to slip away. This is what the enemy will do. He'll come and get you little by little to start compromising your faith, compromising your relationship with God. It's like being crazy in love with a girl until you marry her. And then, little by little, the fires start to go out until you're calling your wife old lady and grandma. The fire goes out, little by little. If you want a good marriage, if you want good relationship, you have to work at it, and not just one-sided. If you want to have a good friendship, you have to work at it, and not just one-sided. You have to work at the relationship. And Jesus said, well, you couldn't cast it out because these kinds only come out by prayer and fasting. They used to pray and fast. The scripture says that. But now they're not. This is the signs of demons working around you in your life. They start to distract you. 
until the very thing you said you loved, which was Jesus, there's no proof of that. And no proof of that. You love what you spend your time with. The Bible says, your heart is where your treasure is. Your heart is where your treasure is. So where is your heart? Where is your real heart? See? What is your treasure? It should be Jesus. And it's easy to say, Jesus. You're in church, so it's easy to go, well, Jesus is my treasure. But it doesn't matter what you say. It don't matter what you say. All that matters is the fruit of your life. It's not about guilt. It's not about shame. It's about yes or no. That's all. I'm not here to condemn somebody or point the finger, oh, look at me, I'm the golden boy. I'm not the golden boy. We all have to work at it. It's a fight to keep the right priority. But you see, people who pray, they do it because they want something, don't you? Why do you pray? You don't pray to worship God. Because you can worship God, and that's not really prayer. You worship God to come into the presence of God, but prayer is request. People come to God because they want something. And when they can't get what they want, they backslide. You show me any backslider out there that never goes to church, and I'll show you somebody, if they can be honest, who couldn't get what they wanted from God. They couldn't get what they wanted, and Satan got a hold of them and said, yeah, I told you that guy don't care. Yeah, I told you he's don't. Yeah, I told you. And they go away because they can't get what they want. But see, just praying is not enough. You can't get up in the morning and jump in your car, oh God, uh, hey, bless me today, oh God, you know, oh God, please give me peace, oh God, please, oh God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's, that's what people call prayer, give me, give me, give me. Give me, give me, give me, give me. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Because the first one that has to get is God. You cannot get from God unless you give to God. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about service. I'm talking about relationship. See? Relationship. If you're not giving that to him, if you don't never come home to your wife for six months, you come home and go, oh, honey, I want to have sex, she's going to go, forget about it. I changed the locks on the bedroom door. Because there's no intimacy. You're just trying to use her. You're just trying to use your husband because he has money, but there's not because of love. Do you see? Do you see? There has to be relationship to make it work. And God is not the magic genie. Give me this, give me that, give me, give me. Because God is up there. What do you think God's up there saying? God's up there going, well, give me first. I guarantee you that's what God's going to say first. Oh, give me first. Give me love. Give me relationship. Give me your time. Show you care about me. And people don't realize that. They never think that God actually needs something. They never think that. Without God, he has nothing. Without you, God has nothing to eat because God eats fruit. You have to produce fruit. If you don't produce fruit, what's he going to eat? You see? People don't usually think about these kinds of things. You could not cast that demon out to help someone. You could not help somebody. You could not help people's families because you stopped prayer and fasting. Because you say, well, I used to have the anointing. Well, I used to have a relationship with God. I used to. 
And you think you still do because you used to. No. It don't work like that. Everybody understands you have to charge your bat, don't you? Everybody here, all the phone zombies, that's the first thing everybody knows. Is, uh, oh, uh, low bat, low bat, low bat. You say low bat, everybody knows what you mean. Well, that's how the Holy Spirit works. You can get a low bat. You can start with a high bat and you've used it up and now you're in a low bat situation because you don't charge it. You don't recharge it. That's how it works. Now, that's not how you want it to work, but that's... But that is how it works. Look at Ezekiel 2, 1 through 10. Ezekiel 2. Look, today's talk is not about what you can't get. Today's talk is about what you could get, what you can get. This is not a bad talk. This is a good talk, exciting talk, that you can finally get the things that you've been hoping to get from God. So don't let the devil tell you, oh, it's so depressing. It's so no, it's not. This is exciting. Are you excited? Yes. What? Yes. Oh, okay. Thought I'd lost you. There for, a, there for a minute. Ezekiel 2, 1. The Lord said to me, Stand on your feet and I will say something to you. Stand on your feet and I will talk to you. Why would he have to stand on his feet? Because he's down on the ground praying on his knees. The visitation came when he was on his knees praying. Got it? Did you get it? <laughs> yeah. Look at verse 3, 22. The hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Get up! I want to talk to you. Get up. Get up. Arise. Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Arise. You see? Then the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. He wasn't on his feet. He was on his knees praying in the Spirit to God when the visitation came. And the Holy Spirit came on him and spake to me and said, Go shut yourself up. Go into isolation. See, many people have these demons. They have these demons of isolation. Keep you away from anything of God. Keep you away from the people of God. Keep you away from your prayer partners. See, that's demonic imitation. That's isolation. Never comfortable around people don't really trust anyone, can't trust anybody, everybody's a liar, everybody's out to get me. See, these are the things that demons say to you. Prayer and fasting. Do you see? Go shut yourself up to be alone with God. To be alone with God. Go shut yourself up. Hmm? Yes? When I want you to speak, I will open your mouth. I will give you words. This is Matthew 10. Don't be concerned when called up before the judgment seats, for I will put the words in your mouth. The Holy Spirit will put the words in your mouth. In order for the Holy Spirit to speak out of your mouth, you have to have the Holy Spirit in you. Right? Isn't that right? Uh, look at Daniel 9. Daniel 9. Yes? Still excited? Yes. Daniel 9. 
Verse 1. The first year of the king, I began praying. He began praying and seeking the Lord. And he began seeking information, looking in the books. And he began to look, how can I get rid of this curse? How can I stop this curse? that was holding them in demon land. And he saw that it had come to the point where the curse was up. It was a 70-year curse. And the Lord told him, okay, but now to release it, you have to go into prayer and fasting. Do you see? If you really want deliverance, if you really want the breakthrough, prayer and fasting, you can't beat it. It will get you completely ready to be delivered, and it will get you completely ready to do deliverance. It will bring you into, into the presence of God. Verse 5, and he began to say, we have sinned against God. He begins to break the curses and do renunciation lists. And he says, because we didn't keep the word of God, this is why, this is why we are being attacked. Look at Daniel 10, verse 1. I began having the understanding of visions. Hmm. And he began praying and fasting. Look. He began praying and fasting. And then during the prayer and fasting, I lifted up my eyes and I looked, and a certain man clothed in linen, sent from God, this is a spiritual being, whose loins were girded with fine gold and upas. His body was like beryl. He's probably seeing Jesus. He's having a God visitation that he could not have gotten without prayer and fasting. And again, I want to warn you, don't say, well, that's three weeks. Well, that's three weeks. You don't have to pray and fast three weeks straight. You have to start somewhere. But at least you can start with something. You can start to work with one day. One day. Start with one day of fasting, the way I've been trying to lead you into. And it's getting easier and easier, isn't it? You're thinking less about food on right now than you did even a couple weeks ago. Is that right? You see, because look, most worldly people let their body tell them what to do. You cannot allow your body to tell you what to do. I told you, your parents built your body as a house for the, spirit of, for the spirit that God created, which is you. Your parents built the house, and God built the spirit and put you in as a renter. Now, the price, the price of the rent is walking with God obedience to God, and taking care of yourself. See? You have to start taking care of yourself. Your body keeps going, rice, rice, rice. I want unlimited rice. No, you ain't getting that rice. You just speak to your body. No, you're not getting that. Your body goes, yes, I am. No, you're not. See, your body can't do anything. Your body can't eat rice unless you tell him, well, okay. My body needs my permission because my body is not me. My body is not me. So anything that my body wants to do needs my permission. My body needs permission to sin from me. That's why God holds me responsible. You see? When you get up for judgment before God, he's not going to go, well, your body, this, this, and that. No, he's going to say you. Because you're going to be standing there in the spirit. 
everyone will be judged before God according to the works, good or bad. Right? So you start telling your body, well, okay, or no. And at first your body is going to try and argue, but then when your body gets to the point of understanding, well, I can't win the fight. The spirit is stronger than the flesh. Because that's how God made it. Then your body starts to realize who's the boss. See, but if you don't do this, your body's always going to claim to be the boss. You can speak, you can speak to things in your life. You can speak to your organs. You can speak things and have it come to pass. You can speak unto demons and tell them go. And they must obey. We have authority in the name of Jesus. But you have to use these authorities. Do you see? And you cannot let the flesh dictate. Because the flesh is always going to tell you, well, I'm tired and hulat long, delit long gani. For a while, another time, I have something else to do. This, that, this, that. Your body doesn't want anything to do with God. Your body hates God. The flesh hates God. The flesh don't like to be told what to do. But instead, you can tell your flesh, no, you will not hate God. You will love God. And the Bible will go, no, I won't. Yeah, I'll make you love God. Then the body has to obey. How can you make your body love God? You make it work for God. Right? You tell your body you're going to work for God. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. But if you listen to your body, you're going to tell you, no, I'm not. I'm tired. I, I don't feel like that. That's too hard. That's too much. That's too long. I don't have time for that. Let the pastor do that. No. We're all saints of God. We all have our part, every one of us. You have to decide who's the master. A demon can be your master. The Bible says, unto whomever you give your members to obey will become your master. You can let a demon master your life, and the demon's going to go, oh, you don't go to church, oh, you don't read the Bible. Oh, you, If you're not going to church, some church, a real church, and you're not reading the Bible, and you're not praying, you're serving a demon. You're serving a demon, because the will of Satan is no one serves God. That's the will of Satan. But if you don't know what demons want to do, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Look. And I heard a voice, and behold, a hand touched me and set me on my knees, on the palms of my hands, and said, The Lord has heard your prayer. The Lord has heard your prayer. And the Lord wants to tell you something. Then he said unto me, Don't be afraid. From the first day that you set your heart to understand, set your heart to understand, you have to set your heart to the things of God. You have to tell your heart, yes, you will, and you're going to be happy about it. The curses in Deuteronomy 28 says, you get a curse on your life for not serving God with joy. So if you go, well, I don't know, should I go to church today? Uh, I don't know, I'm kind of tired. I've been working all week. I stayed up late last night on Facebook. Uh, I don't know, should I? Mm, well, I should, I should, but mm, I don't know. See, there's a fight. Mm, 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 mm. What's the fight? The fight is the demons around you. They're trying to convince you of the lie that you're tired. The Bible says, I can do all things in Christ, who strengthens me. But if you don't have Christ in your life, how is he going to strengthen you? Those who wait upon the Lord will have their strength renewed. They will rise up on the wings of eagles. They will run and not go weary. They will walk and they will not faint. So if you're too tired to walk and you feel like fainting and giving up and quitting, it's because you're not waiting on the Lord. What is waiting on the Lord? Prayer and fasting. Spending time with God. Even the, 
Even a good place to start is just sit down in a quiet place and start reading your Bible again. That's the beginning. Sit down in a quiet place and read very slow. And because it's the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will start to speak to you, and you'll start to see new revelations. Have you ever noticed that? I told you. I told you. Must be what he wanted. He went up front, right? Hallelujah. Come on, brother. We're getting better and better. Yes? Getting excited? <laughs> it's a good place to start. Okay? Don't let your body rule over you. Huh? Come on, brother. I'm 67 years old. You want to go run around? I'll race you around the block. I bet I beat you. What are you, 20 something? Huh? Sure. Because I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. How about you? How about you? See, even these young boys, they can run faster than me, but they can't run longer than me. Because once you've through, been through all the battles, you got lasting power. From the victory testimonies in your life, you get lasting power. The turtle and the rabbit story. The rabbit runs like crazy, but then he tires out and starts to want to take a nap. See, I don't like to take no nap. That's for old people. That's for old people. People are always asking me around here, oh, oh, sir, how old are you? I said, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. You got to get the Holy Spirit. Look, your words are hear heard from God. What words? Prayer and fasting words that did not come immediately. You have to spend quality time sessions over and over you have to make it part of your life jesus didn't run home and pray and fast when he ran into the boy he was already had prayer and fasting in his life so he was ready the bible says be ready in season and out of season always be ready always be prepared do you see that's what daniel did they told Daniel, the government, the government told Daniel, we better not catch you praying to God. At least twice a day, we're going to play demon music, like over there at the mall. We're going to turn up them speakers, and we're going to blast demon music twice a day. And anybody... When you hear the demon music, you better fall on your knees and start worshiping the demon music. Look at all the kids at the mall. They can all sing the drug, the gangbanger songs from all the gangs, from all the murderers, from all the drug dealers with their gangbanger music. They know all the words, but they don't know any scripture. They have been trained by Satan. They have been trained by the spirit of Babylon to worship, and as soon as the music comes on, they all start singing instead of doing their jobs. Look in the markets. Go in the markets. I don't know what time it is, but at a certain time comes the prayer to Mary. And they start playing it over the loudspeaker. Holy Mother. Holy Mother, how be thy name, Mother of God? Blah, 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 Mary, Mary, Mary. Oh, Mother Mary, oh, Mother Mary. Jesus is the way, the life, and the truth. Jesus is the door, and no one comes to the Father but through and by him. You cannot worship a dead person. That's necromancy, Deuteronomy 18. You cannot worship a dead person. The only reason you can worship Jesus is Jesus came up alive out of the tomb. Mary's mother of God in heaven, but she's not here. And as soon as they start to play this, people go into a trance, Look in the market, they go like, it just like freeze, like, 
over a dead person that can't hear your prayer. There's nothing Mary can do for you. That's a false spirit. Jesus is the only way. The Bible says, call no man on earth father, but only your father in heaven. So why do they call the Pope the Holy Father? And nothing holy about him. He's not the Holy Father. The Bible says the Holy Father is the Father in heaven. And people say, well, I don't agree with that. Well, that's your problem. Get delivered. You can't say I'm a believer, but I don't believe the Bible. You have to come to the place of truth. If you want victory, if you want the blessing, if you want the presence of God, then you have to do things the way God says. And that doesn't mean become a religious robot. I'm not a religious robot. But there are things that work and things that don't work. And they're not... They're not all that complicated. Look, look at verse 13. God heard you 21 days ago. But the prince, but the prince of demons that rules over Persia, this is a ruling national demon spirit, came and I had to fight with him for 20 days. Then God sent Michael, the chief of princes, to come and help me, to come and help me. One angel wasn't enough to overcome what God wanted to give him because of his prayer and fasting. So he had to continue on through the fight. You can't say, well, I, I prayed one time to God. So why God doesn't answer my prayer? Because some of these things require continued battle by you in the Spirit. Over and over and over without giving up, without quitting. You have to hang in there and you have to keep going. And the whole time these demons, the demons know you're praying. They knew he was praying. When he started to pray to release the captives, Satan sent a big demon to say, they won't get free. They won't get free. God's not going to use you. God's not going to use you. Now, if he would have just prayed one day, the demon would have defeated it. You get it? Because it says on the 21st day when he prayed, it activated on the 20th day. The next day. And on the next day, it began the fight. It began the war. And the fight went on for 20 days. Actually, it went on for 21 days because the real fight, the real fight is not against the demon. The real fight is you against your flesh. The first fight is your spirit against your flesh. Because your flesh says, well, I want lunch today. I want to eat today. I don't want to go in there and spend time alone with God. I ain't got time for that. And your flesh starts to argue. Do you see? The very first battle where most people, 90% of all people get utterly, completely defeated, not because of a demon, but because of your flesh. Because they fail, they fail to take authority over their flesh. And they take the advice of their flesh. Now, the problem is, if you still have a demon and you're not delivered, now you got two things against you. Now you got the demon and you have the flesh against you, the spirit. Two against one. You see? So this is why getting delivered can help you out with that, but you still got the flesh. Then he had to keep going. Look, the angel of God comes and starts... The demon, Satan sends the demon to start the fight. God says, uh-oh. The demons are there to block it. It's like trying to get from here when we pray up through the second heaven. 
This is why the Methodists say, pray it through, pray it through, pray it through. You have to go up through the principalities and the powers of the air. You have to get through that. You have to defeat them by your prayer. Warrior tongues, usually, or speaking in authority. To make it up, you have to make it up through that. Paul talks about all these things. You have to make it up through there. That's, that's the fight you have to do. Okay, so who's fighting now? Satan sends the demon, and God sends his, sends his angel. And then they see, you know what? This demon is a super powerful, man. This is like uh, Prince of Persia. That's going to be like one of these major ruling Muslim spirits. And you know all the, these people, they all pray five times. You know them devout Muslims, they pray five times. So these spirits have a lot of power. They have a lot of power, right? So they send one angel and they think, well, that, might, you know, that should be enough, but then they find out it's not enough. So they have to send another angel who's the king of the warriors. I mean, the warrior angel, which is Michael, right? What is powering up the angels? What's powering the angels? Now you say, well, God. Well, angels are powerful, right? Angels are powerful. Yeah, they are. But angels are activated by faith and prayer. By faith and prayer. Do you know that you can do everything that God can do? Oh, that going to be a shock. You can do everything that God can do. You might think, oh, that's blasphemy. No, that's not blasphemy. I can do all things in Christ. All things in Christ. If I'm in Christ, Christ is in me. Prayer can do all things that God can do. Why? Because prayer activates the hand of God. It's God, that, it's God that does it, but it's your prayer that activates it. Even though, I'll tell you this, even though these two angels were there fighting this demon, if he would have, get, if he would have listened to Satan and went, well, I guess not, God's not going to answer it. Well, I guess prayer don't work. Well, I guess God don't care. Because that's what the demon's going to be telling you the whole time. Oh, God, this, God, that, accusing God. If, if he would have given up, I would say, I would say this. He wouldn't have won that battle. It's not that the angels could not win the battle. But we have to do our part. Do you see? We have to be involved. Faith without works is dead. Right? Faith without works is dead. This was a long battle. But it was, but a big battle was required for this. There are things in your life, was in mine too, that required a big battle. A big battle. I had to do some serious things to get free from some of the things that I had coming from my background. And for many of you also. You can get a lot of deliverance up to a point. And then most deliverance stops working. You get delivered up to a point, and then deliverance just seems to stop working or just like super slows down. At first, you're all excited. Oh, man, I'm really getting free. Oh, look, I'm getting delivered every time. Oh, wow, I'm getting super powerful deliverance. And then it starts to slow down. You get to the point in deliverance, as you start heading towards the finish line, where the only way you'll get delivered is by crying. 
and ain't no deliverance person can make you cry. I'm not saying, oh, make yourself cry and you'll get free. What I'm saying is, you're going to have to get to the point, past the lie of I surrendered everything to God, I surrendered my everything to God. You have to get past that lie, and you have to start heading to the place where you're really trying to do it. You don't just need Jesus. You need deliverance. You need to get free from these past wounded things, from the rejection, from the abandonment, from the hurts. It's there, and it's spiritual. It's not just emotional. Proverbs 18, 14 says, you can be used to getting sick, but a wounded spirit, spirit, no one can bear it. But you need deliverance. You need spiritual help from that. And you can't get it with cheap deliverance. You can't get it by me going, okay, Say in Jesus' name, and you go, in Jesus' name, I renounce, I renounce. See, those things work in the beginning. Renouncing these things, breaking the curses, okay, that works in the beginning. All of you know that. But then you get to a point. We're just renouncing something, even though you renounced it a million times before, it don't work because it's just words. It's just words. It has to get to a place where you become broken. Not broken beyond repair, but broken from the pride of life. Broken from denial. Broken from, no, I'm okay when you know you're not. And that's very hard. People always get upset when they go, well, how long, how long could it, will it take me, do you think, to get delivered? And I say, well, you know, some people get delivered in uh, a year or maybe a couple years if they really apply themselves, and other people could take 50 years. And people go crazy, oh, 50 years, oh, what? I'm supposed to do deliverance every day. Oh, listen to James, you know what James is? James is obsessed with deliverance. He'll, he tell you, you got to do deliverance every day for 50 years. See, all the happy clappies, they all like to say, make this kind of stuff up. But I, don't, but I don't say it takes that long. I say for some people it could take 50 years. Why? It's not because it takes that long to cast out demons or to break curses. It don't take very long to do that. But it could take that long for those people to finally surrender to God. It could take that long for them to finally repent. It could take that long for them to finally go home and throw the uh, demonic stuff out of their house. It could take them that long to throw away the pornography. It could take them that long to quit sleeping with their boyfriend in sex outside of marriage. It could take them that long to throw away the Tondawai, to throw away the red horse, to quit smoking. It could take them that long of all those things because they never conquered their flesh. And the demon is hiding there. And he's ruling over that. And without repentance, real deep repentance, and when you get to those things, way down there, it's going to be crying time. A wounded spirit comes out with tears. Anger, hatred, rage, these kinds of demon spirits that get cast out of people, they come out with... Because that's what they are. That's what they are. But those are fruits of the real ruling strongman. Those are protectors of the wound. Protectors of the wound. When you start to talk about the deep things, that's when anger comes up. I don't want to talk about that. No, talk about that. I don't want to talk to my mother. And see, here, uh, the protector will come up. But you see, something must have happened with mom. Something must have happened with dad. 
Something must have happened. You got raped. You got molested. You got abused. You got rejected. Something bad happened, and Satan got in there, and he got a hold of that. And then Satan told you, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to bring that up. I don't want to. Oh, you don't? Well, then I'll send something to help you. And you get the spirit of pride. No, I'm fine. I'm okay, but you're not. Pride. Anger. Hatred. Rage, confusion, they all come in to protect this thing because you don't want to deal with it, and it gets down there. And you have to get rid of all these protectors to finally get to, finally get to the real root. The rest is just fruits on the tree. But if you want to get rid of the tree, you can't just cut it off of the ground. That's cheap. You want to really get a tree out, you got to dig up the roots. If you don't, it's going to grow back. You see? And you're going to come to the place. See, this is the hard part. You're going to come to the place where you're going to have to really get broken. And you can do that unwillingly because Jesus says everyone will be tried in the fire. As many as the, love, as many as the Lord loves, he'll rebuke you and correct you. Or you can do it willingly. Or you can do it willingly. When you pray, Lord, break me. Lord, less of me, more of you. This is what I always pray. Not because I want to be a broken person. The Lord knows what, I, what I'm looking for. I'm looking forward to get, getting rid of the things that are hindering me and blocking me from going forward. If, if I am going to have to stay in a place like this, the world, if I'm going to have to stay in a place like this, full of all of this demon stuff, well, then I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to try and make the best of it. I'm going to try and get the most that I can get out of this life, and I don't mean make money, all this money. No. I want everything that God can offer. But I have to remove the hindering things, and I have to seek. Matthew 7, 7 and 8, I have to ask, I have to seek, I have to knock. Behold, Jesus stands at the door. In order to open the door, then he will come in. You have to open the door. Do you see? Can you see it? Look at Luke 2, 36, 37. I, I got a whole bunch more stuff. We'll do it next week. I got something else to do. Look at Luke 2, 36 and 37. Yes, a sword shall pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, she was a prophetess, speaking by the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. She was a widow and served God with fastings and prayers day and night. A true prophetess, a true woman of God that God uses because she spends quality time with God in prayer and fasting. In prayer and fasting. She takes the Jesus model. She takes the Jesus model and she applies it onto her life onto her ministry. Look at Acts 14, 19 through 23. Acts 14, 19. There came thither certain Jews from Antioch, enemies, who began to talk with the people and persuade them to kill Paul. 
and they took Paul out of the city. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around him, he rose up and went back into the city after they had stoned him to death. And he came back to the city and preached the gospel and began to teach. Verse 22, confirming unto the disciples, telling them in faith that we much through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. Walking with God is not an easy thing to do. Getting up to the higher level things of God is not an easy thing to do. And Satan will try and affect many to work against you. To frustrate you, to discourage you. He has many he can use. But only by keeping your eyes on the prize. And when they had ordained others to work for God, they prayed and fasted. Ministries are started by prayer and fastings. Ministries, the power of ministries are kept alive. The anointing is kept going. Your battery gets charged by prayer and fasting. All of this is scripture. Look at Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah 1. One through five. The entire city of God had been completely destroyed from backsliding away from God. Someone came from the broke down city of God and I asked them, how is it going back at the place where the church was because we're all taken captivity and they said unto me the remnant that are left in the province are being attacked they are in great affliction and reproach and the wall has been broken down and the gates have been burned with fire and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and began crying and morning days and fasting and prayer. I went into prayer and fasting. And I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, God that keeps covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Please, Lord God, listen to my prayer. Look, if you've gone to a place where you feel that your quality time with God has broken down. If you feel, well, I used to really have the fire. I used to really be excited about the things of God. But somehow, but somehow, it's broken down. My walk with God. Maybe you feel like you're just someone who's just going through the motions. Should I go? Well, I don't know. I guess I should. I guess I should. Because your bat is low. Because you got a low bat. Recharging your battery with the Holy Spirit. You'll want to. The argument will stop. The demons around you are still going to try and get you to not do it, but it won't be able to convince you. If you have a full bat, you have full power of resistance. Maybe, maybe you used to be so on fire for your ministry, going out on the street preaching, going back to your family and witnessing to them instead of being afraid of those demons in all your family that tell you to shut your mouth. Maybe you're intimidated now. and You didn't used to be, but you let those demons intimidate you. 
you should never be afraid of a demon. Never. Demon says something, you've got a right to say it back. In the spirit of God. Not in the flesh, where the trap is. Maybe you used to be so on fire working with your prayer partners. Oh, always working with your prayer partner. Oh, deliverance was so exciting, so necessary. Oh, I'm feeling so much better. Oh, this is making everything work so much more. But now it's excuse, excuse, excuse. You are the only one who knows where you are at. Besides God and Satan. Not me. Not me. You're the only one. But this morning, when I was praying, I heard the Lord say, I want to recharge the bat. I want to recharge the bat. And one touch by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, can bring you from down here in the red zone all the way up to the green. Now, I know I'm not talking to everybody, and that's, that's okay. I don't need to do that. I'm only looking for hungry ones. God's looking for the hungry ones. But if you're one of those, and you would like to charge that back, Well, then we can bring up four of you at a time, if you want. <coughs> bring up the ones that were at the class this morning and last night first. The first fruiters. If you want, if you don't, you can just stay in the little bat chair. That's okay. If you don't need a recharge, well, then you don't need one. But if you do... Come up and we'll just pray for you real fast. And we will tell whatever it is in the name of Jesus, we will speak to whatever it is that has been convincing you not to go full, full force with God. Because there has to be some opposition there, right? Must be. If you think there's something like that, you can... You can come up. Come on, maybe do like four at a time. Boom, boom. We'll... And if you don't, then I'll go back upstairs praying and fasting. Up to you. Anybody? If so, come on, four, or, you know. Come on. You come up. Help me. Help the Lord. Father, give you praise. We give you glory. We lift you up on high. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of praise. Father, we thank you for the oil of the Holy Spirit today, Father God. We thank you, Father, for a whole new bat today, Father God. Recharge our bat according to your promise, Father God. Charge it up. In the name of Jesus, we bind. Come on, you, you three want to come up? If you do. If you do. We bind the enemy in Jesus' name. Come up here, cat, okay? You can help. We bind the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind you. We bind every opposition of the enemy today in Jesus' name. You will not be able to resist. You will not be able to stop anything. You will not be able to hinder anything. This is a work from God, and nothing can go against the work of God. 
Amen? Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to release us from any hindrance, any type of spiritual block that might be there trying to get us to lose our fire. And I ask you to remove those things and bring back high excitement, high expectation back into it in the mind and name of Jesus. Do you agree with that? Deliver us from anything, Father, that you don't like. If there's anything in our life that you don't like, I ask you to remove it and take it away in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you agree with that? Anybody else? Anybody else?
health attacks the one responsible for those health attacks I bind you and I command you according to the word of the Lord I command you in the name of Jesus that you're gonna leave her right now I command you in the name of Jesus I command you out you go now leave her leave her leave her leave her leave her leave her you come out you come out you come out you come out, that immunity attacking spirit. I know you are there. I heard the Lord say yesterday that you were there. And I command you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I command you in the name of Jesus. Out you come. Out you come. Out you go. 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 I command you to leave. In the name of Jesus, everything bringing that sickness, I command you in Jesus' name. I command you nonstop compromiser, the compromiser of the immunity system. I heard your name. I command you to come out. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Out, out. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, leave, 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 leave. Come out, come out, come out. Come out of that immunity system. Every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. Come out, come out, come out. Immunity compromise here. Come out, come out. That's right. Leave now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 
wrong things. That's what the Lord is saying. Wrong things. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Wrong things. Wrong things. I mind you and I command you to leave right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, you will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wrong things. Wrong things. Out 100%. 100%. 100%. 100 percent yes you will yes you will yes you will in jesus name thank you father thank you father thank you father Jesus name in Jesus name take that burden off 100% release it father God release it release it Lord release it father in the mighty name of Jesus Anybody else want some prayer? Anybody? Anybody else? Anybody? Praise the Lord. 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 There's healing in the house. He's a healing God, saving God, delivering God, God of restoration. God, release. Release this girl right now. In Jesus' name. Release her. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Release. 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 Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. In Jesus' name. That's right. 100%. To the glory of God. To the glory of God.
Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out, come out, come out, in Jesus' name. Couple cuffs, couple cuffs, couple cuffs, out you go, out, out, in the name of Jesus, leave now. Thank you, Father, thank you, Jesus, that's right. The Lord is a deliverer, he will deliver you. He will set you free. He will set you free. Praise to the Lord. Praise your Father. Praise you, Jesus. I lift you up. I lift you up. I lift you up, Father. I lift you up, Father. Praise you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Holy Father, in the mighty name of Jesus for healing, for healing on the side of this head, for the healing on her ear, Father God. I curse every cancer, every tumor, in the name of Jesus, that infection running through the body, I pray, Father, in the glory of God to remove it right now to the glory of God, to the glory of God, to the glory of God. Release her. Release her. Laias polito, laias polito, la bas la hat. Gua, 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 laias, laias, laias. I give you praise, Father. I lift you up. Complete healing. Complete healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name, Father. Merciful God. Kind God. Compassionate God. All of it leaves. All of it leaves to the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Be gone in the name of Jesus. You go in the name of Jesus. 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 That's right. Leave in Jesus' name.
believe it. In Jesus' name. 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 Come up here again. Come on, come here. Wow. Come here. Say in Jesus' name. I never get sick. I never get sick. I never get sick. Sickness has no power over me. I ask forgiveness. Everything in my family, in my life, that brought these attacks. The one responsible. You will go 100%. You are not leaving this church with this woman. You are not leaving this church with this woman. You will leave in the name of Jesus. You will leave in the name of Jesus. You will go 100%. 100%. I pray, Father, remove it 100%. To your glory, to your glory, to your glory, to your glory. You leave right now. You leave right now. You're not going to keep doing that. You leave right now in Jesus' name. I see what you're doing. You leave right now. I see what you're doing, and you're going to leave right now. 